Buenos dias a todos. Good day all and welcome. Um, remember to wear your mask at all times when you're going out, making sure you cover your nose and your mouth and when you're taking it out, use it by the handle, okay? Do not touch the top. As you're finished with it, put it to a wash, okay? All right. So um, we are continuing from our lesson last week and we are building on it. Now I gave you comments, which I hope you listened and you adjusted because we just started with just a basic drawing. Um, we weren't supposed to start coloring everything as yet. All right. So in this lesson, you are going to be feeling you are free because I'm going to teach you some techniques. If you want to add some more of the butterflies, the false giant swallowtail butterflies, you can add it. Um, if you want to add more flowers, you can add it. One thing I would like is a little more leaves because I know we just did the foreground. So let's get started and see what it is we have to do. Right. Okay, so here we have a close up picture of what the lantana looks like. I'm sure all of you are familiar with it. You would have seen it, right? Yes, those of you who remember, we had it, we had it at St. Joseph Girls RC School, right? It was going very wild there. In fact, we had the pink one, right? Right, so we are on to part two. So we are doing drawing and coloring, okay? So up to our last lesson, we were up to this point, illustrating the leaves and the flowers. So I just want to, I picked it for you to see because some of you did not understand. The leaf has a distinct shape that this one is. If you look at the end of the leaves, it is sort of curled and you could actually see the veins forming the V. And if you look at the flower, the lines that we drew, but let me turn it this way to you, right? Okay, flowers take different patterns. Mainly, you find that it forms a circle of one color and in the middle, another color. All right? Okay, so remember that we're going on now. Okay, so this is the illustration we had to do. I think we just did one, two, three, four branches, right? So you are at liberty to add more. Now, if we look at the lantana, right? So because this lantana, the rain fell just now and it just kind of washed away some of the flowers. You will notice it is made up of a cluster of flowers. So first it starts off with the yellow forming a ring, a circle. Then you have a dark color, a kind of reddish, and then you have orange on the outer circle. All right, if you look again here, there's the yellow with the pink in the middle, the orange outside, and the other shade of pink. So you're looking at shades of colors. Now, some of you will say, Miss, I don't have shades of colors. Once you have yellow, once you have red, you could start with the yellow, right? If you don't have orange, you put the yellow first and then the red on it to get the orange. And if you want to make a red orange, you use the orange and the red, you color over it. Using colored pencils, yes, you will get that same effect. So let me go over that again. So the lantanas, you have mainly like a pink in the middle, right? And on the outer side, you have like a ring of red, of yellow flowers. Then you would have orange and possibly a darker color. So it's made up of clusters of flowers, but the main circle is yellow and then it forms around it. Okay, you can see that I'm moving here with my mouse. I'm showing you that. So there's your cluster of yellow, then your orange, then your red, okay? Let's see how, what we're going to do. So from our last drawing, we just had the lines and here it is, I made, firstly I put my little pink in the middle here and then I made my ring of yellow around it, okay? After that, I went with, a orange and then a deeper red. So I went down in the lines that we had from before. 
okay? And if you want to add more flowers to your drawing, to add more life to it, you can do it, okay? All right, so the main leaves, right? We are using the main leaves that we had. Remember, we are looking at that curved ends and the veins, all right? So some of you give me straight ends. Let me just show it to you again. It has curved ends and you can distinctly see the veins. The veins form the letter V. Now in the picture, you were only able to see some of those, right? So I do want to see mainly at the top, those veins. But as you go along, you add leaves. So here it is, I add leaves, some curves, some fell down this way, curve on this side. Some had curves on both sides. Some of them were flipping up, some were flipping down. Oh, and this is the beginning of a new set of flowers. So here, I also include that in my drawing. So in your free space, a lot of you would have had this free space, have fun. You do what you want. You could even add more flowers there. Now that you know how to draw the lantana, starting off with the base and then the ring of yellow, then the ring of, of orange in the middle would have been the red, all right? Notice too, I also came back with the yellow and just put some dots in it, just to make it pop a little more so you could see it because yellow tends to get faded away. I also put a cluster of seeds, right? Sometimes you would see that too in the lantana. All right, so now I am looking at green. So if you look carefully, the leaves here, it's green, but you're seeing different tones of green. And this different tones of green is because how the light is falling. So you will notice that the upper layer, the top ones, the leaves tend to be light, especially where that sun is shining. But yet at the bottom, it tends to be dark. So using nature, at the top, I colored light green. So some of you may say, but Miss, I don't have light green. You can put green and yellow and you will get your light green. It will tone it down. If you press hard, if you press lightly, you will get your light. This is the same green, pressing light. If you press hard, it will, be, it will have a dark tone. Similarly with the greens, I did the same thing. This is light. This is pressing a little harder. This is pressing light. So you get the different tones of the leaves. This was a darker green that I had. If you don't have dark green, you could mix green and blue together, meaning you could color over in green and color it over in blue because in the lower areas, you had dark leaves that you did not see. So what I did, I filled the areas. Let me just go backwards to show you. Right. So remember the first time we did it here was bare. So we needed to work on that bareness. Okay. So here, we have dealt with the bareness. Here we put the lower leaves in the bottom areas, which are darker because it's lower away from the sun. But those that are higher to the sun, I put my lighter shades of green, my lighter tones. You can use yellow. Also, another technique is when you color in green, you could use the eraser and erase back over so you can get a lighter color. All right, so I should see if you look at the picture, it's not one shade of green, but tones of green. Some of the leaves, we could have seen the veins. Make sure that I'm seeing the veins. Most of them, though, you can't really see it. But those at the top, it did show up. All right. So we are looking at the dark brown of the false giant swallow tea. So some of you, you had some adjustments to make with your butterfly. I want you to pay attention to shape. It's called a giant swallowtail because of this. So some of you, your tail was a bit off, all right? So it kind of bends forward, but then the tail, so this is the, the tail feather of that wing, and this is the tail feather of the other wing. Also, it has a unique pattern, a sort of zigzag at the end, kick out, zigzag at the end, right? So this is the zigzag at the end, this is this one. And this is a zigzag on the end kick out. So here it is, I outlined it in the dark brown, right? Make that zigzag a little thicker. Leave that loop because normally it's, the swallowtail is that, that, that tail, it has a distinctive look, all right? And then I started going over the curves. It has curves as well, all right? So I did the curves here. 
right? Look at it here. I outlined my yellow hair on the underbody, right? Went over the, the antenna, the feet, right? Notice to the lantana, I just outlined the lantana flower. I forgot to show you that. Because if you look at the cluster here, you can see the green right below the bouquet of flowers. Okay, so there are many things here we have to observe. So first, our last lesson, just now we talk about the flower, I did that. Then we're looking at the butterfly. You outline the wing, outline the zigzag, then you go to the tail underneath, and then we start to go with the M's, all right? Which will give you this look, and we do this over here as well. All right. So here it is here. I chose a simpler one for you because I felt that the one before might have been a little difficult, but basically all swallowtails, the Jaffa's giant swallowtail, is the same pattern. It's this sort of curve that they have. All right. So I used my yellow hair and also I mixed my yellow with a little bit of brown. So it gives you a, a, a distinction between this one and that one. This picture though, the other wing is down this way. So you're not seeing it. Right, but I felt that this would help you in your outlining of this. Okay, so this is how it was, and this is what I wanted to see. All right. Everybody seeing that? I hope you've seen it and you're observing, right? Right. So then I was looking at the background. So I am seeing the clouds and I'm seeing the sky. We're ignoring the pole and the lines, right? One thing in art, we could take what we see and put it into a way that you could interpret it. So if you wanted to add another butterfly here, fine, right? Another false giant swallowtail, right? I only want a false sw sw giant swallowtail. Eh? I want you to look and see and find it, okay? And I want you to add, you can add another one because normally they loom around the flowers. They like to come around the flowers, right? My background, I am quite aware some people don't have paints. Instead of paints, you can use your crayon, your color pencil, you color lightly, leave it the cloud area, and you color into the white spaces. So everything sorts up up. If you have paints, remember, it's a wash that you have to do. Okay, so let me stop sharing. Let me get my own. All right, so this is, this is my work in the end, All right? You don't have to do it exactly like mine. If you want, you could bring another butterfly because I know some people may want to try to draw it again. Some girls, I told you, you needed to adjust it, adjust it, okay, before you start working on it. Some of you to work on your leaves. You could probably put another set of leaves with another set of flowers here because we, I specifically left here blank, but I came back to show you how to work on it. And clearly you can see the different tones of green. So we have the green here, the dark tones that the light has not caught. And we have the light coming through, through the light leaves. We also see the veins that are showing up also with the lantana, it dis it's distinct feature of this flowers, the yellow circle, okay? So it's a yellow circle of flowers, the orange on the outside and the red on the outside. So girls, I, I am sure in this lesson, you learned the names of butterflies. You don't just say a butterfly, a false giant swallowtail. So when you see it, you can identify it. It's normally, well, this one is normally yellow and black. There are others, and some you notice have a tinge of blue on it. Notice too, it's beautiful long tail, All right? Some of them are more black than yellow. Some of them are more yellow than black, but the distinctive mark is the tail. Also, you learned about the lantana. And what's so important about the butterflies, the lantanas, the butterflies, they would get nectar from here and then they would go to another plant. So if you happen to have a fruit tree in your yard, the nectar received from the lantana will go to that fruit tree. So it is all an important role in your, it's not just bush or, 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 or something growing there. It forms a purpose. Its purpose is so that the pollinators, when they get from there and they go to what you need, they play a very important job of fertilizing the food. And sometimes you will get food from it. So some of you, you may get tomatoes from it. 
if you like fruits, Portugal's. Um, for me, I have a sugar apple tree. My sugar apple started to bear because of the lantana is right next to my sugar apple tree. So the pollinators have pollinated the lantana and go to the sugar apple and bear it as well. Or pumpkin, pumpkin is another thing. So by hopping from flower to flower, these beautiful um, butterflies, they do their job in providing food for you. All right, once again, safe practices. Notice how I am holding it from the ends here, wrapping it around my ears, making sure my nose and my mouth is very secure. All right, girls, don't forget to be safe. Don't forget to wash your hands. And when you're going out, wear a face mask. Adios.